It's the Jeff Adams Show. The Jeff Adams Show. This is for people. Live from Lakewood, Florida. It's the Jeff Adams Show. listening to the Jeff Adams show. The Jeff Adams show is sponsored by the FBA, the Florida Basketball Association. No egos, they play for passion with heart. Great basketball. Check the fba.com for local schedule. The Jeff Adams radio show is produced by Backbone Radio. Call in the phone lines now at 818-927-6205. BackboneRadio.com. Woo! Wow. Wow, indeed. I think I just blew my eardrums. So much for turning off the TriCaster. <laughs> Good grief. Way to start a show. That woke yes, me sir. up. I guess that uh, that sums up the, the urgency of today's show. It's like, you better wake up for this wake one. Up. Wake up, people. My goodness. Anyways, it's the Jeff Adams Show. Sorry about that. If you were listening, I uh, really apologize. I was reading something and I, oh, forgot to do that. Uh, so anyways, this is the Jeff Adams Show. It's an experiment we've been doing for the last two and a half years. Uh, we do comedy, we try to make you laugh, we try to make you smile, but today is just one of those days where, uh, it's going to be uh, a little bit, uh, serious and some stuff that's going on in the world, but that's okay. We'll try to bring some humor to it, uh, our personal opinions, uh, but you can interact with the show calling at 818-927-6205. That's 818-927-6205. That's the phone lines, call in, you can participate, but yes, um, lots going on in the world today. Lots of stuff. We, we were talking a little bit about the pre-shows, a couple of different little stories. But, uh, you know, normally Chris runs that uh, pre-show, but he was uh, consumed uh, with what's going on here. That was weird. I tried to burp and it wouldn't come out. I was like, <laughs> wait for it. Wait for it. It won't come. All right. So, anyways. Uh, so, Chris uh, hit me up. I think it was like last week. Um, and, you know, here on the show... Uh, like I said, you know, I don't ever really consider this to be my show, even though it has my name on it. But the, 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 the cast and everybody that's involved in the show is very, very important. So, you know, and now that we're doing shows, you know, uh, weekly, I mean, weekly, every day, pretty much, Monday through Friday. Daily? Daily, yes. Sorry. Uh, it's very, very important that we have content. Easy doing one show once a week, but now you're doing... Uh, daily shows, Monday through Friday, it's a lot of work. So with that, uh, a lot of you probably, well, first, let me, uh, let me rewind a little bit. Let's get to uh, introduce uh, who's in the studio today. We got uh, Cray Cray in the house. Yes, sir. Good to be here. Beautiful. Denny Cray. Beautiful day in Lakeland, Florida today. It is. Great it day to be inside. With the Jeff Adams show. Oh, uh, yeah. We're <laughs> in this dungeon of heat. And uh, producing the show, we have uh, R.C. Chris in the house. Hello. Wearing his hat and acting like it's cold outside, but it's really not. It is cold, man. What are you talking about? It's he's gonna cold here. He's going to faint. got my scarf. You know, it's cold. It's like 59 degrees outside. He's gonna, yeah. You're going to faint on the show and pass out. <laughs> Then I'm gonna scramble <laughs> because this whole show is on your shoulders, pretty much. It totally. I was just. I was thinking about that. The show is literally on me, and as we speak in here, you know, I'm still getting some, some links up and stuff like that. I'm like, wait a minute. If my computer fails or I decide to go down this, you better learn how to path, dance. You better learn you know, how to <laughs> dance. <laughs> I better know how to do something. You know, you're gonna have to. You're gonna have to learn how to dance like this. Is Chris panicking to dance? <laughs> Yeah, that's what you're going to have to do if it crashes. But oh well, that's, that's the beauty of what we do, man. It's fun. If it crashes, we'll figure it out. So if you follow the news and what's going on in the news today, uh, the word Indiana has been popping up a lot. Cray Cray, Chris, it's just, if you look on Twitter, it's everywhere. It's everywhere. It's absolutely everywhere. 
They're talking about Indiana, the state, right? Indiana, not the, not, the state. Not the Indians. Not the Indians. Okay, right. Indiana, the state. Right. There's a big difference between Indians. And Indianans. And Indianans. Well, I, I thought, uh, under call like Hoosiers? The Hoosiers. The Hoosiers. It's the Hoosier state. Hoosiers. It's a basketball state. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's, uh, I guess, that's where the Final Four is being played. It's in Indiana, mm-hmm. correct? Yeah. Uh, Indianapolis. Indianapolis, yep. yep. Um, Spank and Hank by 40 points in the bracket. Nice. I'm um, out of the game. You're completely out. <laughs> I'm, I was done like week, like day two. It's like you went to Hard Rock Casino and bet it all in black and you didn't care. <laughs> you didn't put any logic behind exactly. it. Exactly. No, no, there, there weren't. There was no logic behind it. You know, there wasn't. I was just, I just went with it. All right. You got a shout out, Denny. You got a hey. blue, blue Gino. Denny, shout out to Denny. Hey, hey, Chris Theron. Yes. All right. There you go. Hey, Danny, bring in some... Bring in, bring in the guests. Bring in some audience. You. Yeah. He's seeing you. And then we got, you know, EGM in the chat room, as always. Always, she's... Uh, she's, uh, she's always holding it down for there. us. always yeah. She's busy today. She'll only be hearing. She won't be interacting. And the people that stream up, hello, how are you doing? People on Spreaker, thank you, man, for uh, listening on demand. Our demand numbers... Amazing. I, I just... I'm telling you, there's... Cons- when you're consistent with something, mm-hmm. the numbers get up. It's really yep. encouraging. Yep. I mean, our live numbers are not that fantastic where I want them to be like they used to be. But I think we would get some, you know, we get consistency here doing it. Uh, but our demand numbers, man, every single day, they're getting bigger and bigger from the audio version to the video version. Podcasting. Uh, yeah, it's fantastic. On demand, baby. That's right. Uh, That's right. People like in. to have a choice. Yeah, so back to Indiana. Uh, <laughs> the final four. I'm kicking Hank's butt by 40 right now. Well done. It's, it's, it's I, pretty noticed, tight. I noticed I didn't get into that pool because I, I knew I wasn't going to be able to swim very well probably. Uh, I took some gambles. I think yeah. if I would have went with you my gut, to, I think I probably could have blown out Hank. But I, I did. I did some risk because it's the it's the the sixty four man. Yeah, Who you gotta you, take some risk. Do you have Kentucky winning it? Do I have Kentucky winning it? Uh, or yes, does Hank? I do. Yeah, I think that's why uh, I'm ahead. And I also put uh, Duke in as well. Mm. Uh, two teams in the final four usually sets you pretty good. I think I believe I picked three out of the four that are in there. Michigan State being the one that that's that you didn't pick. Uh, I would have to look. Okay. But I, from, from what I understood, I picked three. That's why I'm up. But I right. took some gambles on, I think I probably could have had all four in there. I'm thinking if I, but I, I gambled a little bit. Right. I was like, that could be upset, upset. And I'm glad I stuck with Kentucky. Mm-hmm. I thought they were going to get upset. Maybe they still will. I don't know. Uh, I mean, I haven't watched too much, but from what I've heard, they look, they look like men against boys out there and they're all you know, 19 year old freshman playing, playing college basketball and just, yeah, it's just it, killing it. They're like a pro team. They are basically, they are. but man, good for them. SEC representing. Absolutely. The best conference in college man. ever man. for football <laughs> and basketball. <laughs> no, not for basketball, but Kentucky. But Kentucky's and legit. Florida's good too. Gators got a good basketball program, but they're all freshmen this year. Yeah. Well, so is Kentucky though. So we, let's not, can't use that as an excuse for Florida. So basketball, Indiana, and uh, man, you know, and it's it's amazing that this state has caused so much ruckus as of late. Um, because, you know, it's known, and, and what a time during the Final Four. Mm-hmm. You know, it's almost like all the political agenda going on. Like, we're going to boycott this, and we're going to boycott that. Of what's going on in Indiana? Um <clears throat> You know, when Chris told me about a lot of this, I saw what was going on in the news, and then I think he came in Friday or something. He was really revved up about this. Yeah, Friday. Yeah, it was Friday. Um, and I'm like, okay, well, you know, let's let it marinate a little bit. And marinated, and there's more more things. He actually wrote uh, uh, the website he writes for. What's the website? It's uh, libertycanonmedia.com. Okay, you might want to put that, you find time, put that up. Um, yeah, I will. So people can check it out. So this whole day is spurred off of uh, Chris's um, writings on this blog um, about, is it time to boycott Indiana? And, uh, you know, my thing is, what I get out of this, then I'll let, take, uh, I'll let Chris take the floor on this, is uh, what is tolerance? Mm-hmm. You know, everybody cries, what is tolerance, right? Uh, but, you know, tolerance is not a one-way street. Exactly. Right? Um, but I'm sorry for people that have abused abused it and manipulated it to get to what they want, 
to get done. And it's sad. So with that, um, we're going to get deep and uh, have some great discussion here on the Jeff Adams Show. Chris, floor is all yours, buddy. Awesome. Well, thank you, Jeff. Um, basically, here's what happened on Indiana. Um, Indiana um, decided to create a law, SB 101. Now, this passed um, by both house. And he, here's where the controversial starts with politi politically is a uh, state by the Republicans. Now, um, I don't like to play that whole of states having like, oh, he's a Republican, he's a Democrat, that's why it's happening. No. You know, if you look in our history, you know, we have the First Amendment, which covers all of our freedom. Now, the reason behind this is that lately, within the last five years, I say, uh, a lot of religious liberty, not just Christianity, have been taken away. Now, I understand the reason of both sides, with the left and the right. Now, here's us uh, on March 26, Governor Mike Pence, he's uh, the governor of Indiana, he signed it and he quotes, Today I signed the Religious Freedom Act because I support the freedom of religion for every Hoosier of every faith. Now, here's where I love it because as soon as he said that, Twitter started, the Twitter activists started with the hashtag boycott Indiana. Now, if you're going to, you know, last time I checked, hashtags doesn't do anything other than give you likes and retweets. And here's where I have a problem with it. And you probably did the research that I sent you, Jeff. Yeah. You probably did research by yourself. But come to find out that in the 19, uh, 1993, Congress passed it and President Clinton signed that it. That is right. I passed the bill. <laughs> and I did it for a reason. Because I could live on and my wife will get elected. And here's why he passed. Limiting government action that will infringe upon religion to only those that did not substantially burden free exercise of religion absent a compelling state interest and in the least restrictive means. Now, that is a lot of uh, now, wait jumbo a jumbo. Now, wait a minute. Right? Clinton? <laughs> Democrat. <laughs> Carry on, Chris. <laughs> exactly. Thank you for pointing that out. Yeah. Now, here's where we have the uh, the different opinions because now... Wait a minute. What did you just say? Different opinions. <laughs> I just said different penises. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Zero has a different opinions for. I'm trying to get um, you relaxed. You got a lot to cover. Um, we have uh, President Bo uh, President uh, Obama also in Illinois. He was the first one to introduce the same bill in his home state. Obama. Obama. Now, here's what the hypocrites start coming through. His wife, Hillary Clinton, tweeted. Wait, wait, wait. Obama's wife's Hillary Clinton or Clinton? Clinton. Okay, Clinton. all right. Put sad day. In Indiana. Law can be happen in Indiana today. I don't understand how she trying to write that. It's the Indiana law can happen in America today. I don't get how what you she's have that popped to up? Yeah. Alright. Yeah. Oh, let me. Yeah, I got it. No, that's no, the wrong one. There you go. All right. right here. Yep. Sad this new Indiana law can happen in America. Now, it already happened back in the founding fathers. It happened again in 1993, and it happened again in 2015. Now, the reason behind this is all the attacks on Hobby Lobby. Yep. In New York, like we talked about earlier, the bakers that went out of business, the farm. All right, the bakers. Go back to that story. Let's Explain go to that. the bakers. Explain the bakers' story. Now, here's what happened to the bakers. Um, this uh, two females went into the bakery. They went out to uh, get a cake. Now... Uh, the husband was the first one that got contact with them. And he told them, hey, I'm sorry, but we don't bake cakes for that. We don't want to participate in your ceremony because of our religious belief. Now, so it was a it was an anti gay cake, right? It was a gay. It was a cake for a gay wedding. OK. All right. And the gay couple, the lesbian couple wanted the company to bake them a cake. Now, in that. I, I wouldn't bake the cake, but think about it. If you don't want no, somebody, if somebody doesn't want to bake you a cake or bake you anything, will you really want to force them to do it? No. 
I mean, that's that's what we'll get into. I, I, yeah. I mean, we're going to go through these things and explain the reason why this is absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. So, well, I, mean, what, I mean, what do you think about that, Cray Cray? About the, the cake story itself? Well, just uh, where we're going with this. I mean, just on that cake story, if you, let's say, okay, you have a running business. Mm-hmm. I'm not, sorry, an exercise, fitness. You, I have you, both, but yeah. Okay. So basically, someone came to you mm-hmm. that uh, rubbed you the wrong way. Mm-hmm. And they said, no, you've got to train me, man. I've got money. And this is the way, it has nothing to do with, you know, gender or, you know, uh, sexual orientation. Just say you were dealing with a class A douchebag, <laughs> right? There's none of those in Lakeland. What are you talking oh. about? But I'm just, I'm just, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, just, exactly I'm throwing it out there saying. for you. So, right. so people can get the heart out because we're, I don't, I, I don't want to feel like we're stereotyping. Right. No, I agree. So I'm just, there's douchebags that are just mm-hmm. hard people to deal with. Right. You have the right. As a business owner, I have a right to do business with whoever I want. Exactly. Refuse, they want to do business refuse with me, service. Obviously. Refuse service. Yeah. 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 I don't have to take a client if 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 I don't want to. If if I'm too if I'm overbooked. If I don't feel like working that day. If I just if it's just a grade A douchebag and I don't want to work with them. Yeah, absolutely. But what if that douchebag was a government official and said you have to, you have to take my business? I would disagree. And they walk. That's fine. And if they, can, if they can bury me and put me out of business, then that's, I mean... And they start hashtagging you. Saying this guy, slanderous things. Mm-hmm. Hashtag boycott this runs. Yeah. But really don't boycott this runs. Yeah. <laughs> Give him business. Good guy. That's what keeps him afloat. That's why he can come do this show. Absolutely. But yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. that's your right. Yeah, Absolutely. To choose who you want to do business with. That's what this country is all about. Well, I mean, you know, and that's, that's the, it's capitalism at its finest. You know, exactly. I'm, I'm a business owner. You're a, a, a client, potential client, customer, whatever, however you want to label yourself or depending on the business, how, how the label would, would best fit. And if, if I decide to do business with you and that rubs somebody else the wrong way, they can decide to take their business somewhere else. If I decide not to do business with you and that rubs somebody the wrong way, they can, t- you know, it's, it's, that's the free market. Right. And so, sorry, Chris, I'm giving you your thought friend. process. Are We're trying friend? to spread this out a little bit yeah, to explain it. Because this is a lot. Mm-hmm. All right, carry on, Chris. All right, so there's that. So they get to pass, they pass it. And um, now this is the reason why I believe that hashtag boycott Indiana started was celebrities got a hold of it. Like, I don't know how to say his name, Duque. The one from... Uh, uh, Michael Mike Duque. Dukakis? No, I forgot his name. <laughs> Dukakis is old. Old name. Anyway, yeah. well, let, let's get more. Uh, Miley Cyrus got in it, and they started putting hashtag. Uh, I came in my ring, Montel Williams also got reached out, and here's where it gets dumb. Usually, laws that have bills that come up they're like six thousand pages long. You know, Obama Obamacare is like ten thousand encyclopedias encyclopedias put together. This is a five-page law. And it was five-page, it's a title page, so if you include, uh, include that, it's a four-page. Yeah. If, if you take out the, the last page, it's a three-page. Now, if you really want to get the meaty and grind of the bill, it's half a page. If you really read that, and it's not, it doesn't say anything about gays. It doesn't say anything about uh, you deny access to gay. Now, here's um, the best way to explain. It's a real, I'm looking at it right now on my iPad. It's a real simple. It's simple. I mean, one, two, I mean, literally, you know, Chris is not exaggerating. The fourth page has got, you know, mm-hmm. let's see. The fifth page, yeah. That's it's got a, a little sentence there. So yeah. really, it's technically three pages. Three pages mm-hmm. long, exactly. Now, here's, you know, maybe I'm just talking too much big words. Here's the basic way that it got explained to me, and it makes sense. All right, let's go back to Jeff Adams. He has a cupcake business, right? Come on, think of something better than that. <laughs> All right. Jeff Adams has a multimedia company. Yeah, there you go. There we go. That's a good J- idea. JA Creative. Oh, that's a very good idea. <laughs> JA Creative, you know, they tell him, hey, Jeff, we would like you to uh, chew uh, some product for us, some B-rolls and stuff like that. Jeff says, all right, cool. You know, what kind of business are you doing? Well, you know, I would like to have a personal business. I just want you to do me a commercial. All right. Jeff finds out that the owner is part of the gay community. Jeff does the job. He does not care. 
Now, here is where it gets to the law. The same person that asked Jeff from the company, say, hey, Jeff, I have a wedding coming in, um, in August, and I would like you okay. to record my, my gay wedding. Okay. Jeff says, I can't because that's against my religion. Now, here's where it gets tricky. And by tricky, I mean the hypocrites will get separated because if you church, there's a church that already accepted gay community, gay marriage. Wasn't it, it the uh, Methodist? Methodist or Presbyterian? I think it was Methodist. Methodist. Uh, one of those churches already accepted that they will recognize gay marriage. Now, you can't be like, no, I can't do that. And I'm a member of that church. No, because now you've been discriminated because your, your faith, your religion says it's okay. Now, me and Jeff have, I believe we have the same religion, you know, Christianity, you know, and now we believe in the Bible. So we're biblical Christians. Our Bible says that's not right. So me and Jeff be like, hey, I'm sorry. We can't come up to shoot your wedding. Now they sue us. Now we're out of business. Now here's what the law, you know, helps us, you know, that the government can't, after the court, can't tell us to come up and can't tell us, uh, the government can't tell us, the government can't tell us, hey, you have to record this gay wedding because we are telling you, this is where the law steps in and says, no, 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 you can't do that. It's not okay for you to do that. So Jeff, um, go ahead and, are you able to carry on that? Because we have a phone call. I'm going to go ahead and screen this one. Yeah, uh, basically, you know, the, the First Amendment, why Clinton passes Cray Cray, is uh, how easily the government could, per could pervert this mm -hmm. uh, as it seems to be going. Now, on his standpoint, here's what I believe. I believe, you know... Uh, I believe in God, believe in the Bible, thoroughly from or backwards. Mm -hmm. But to be fair, and the tolerance factor of what's going on here is we, uh, we've got to be very uh, cautious of what we say and what we do. And that's why I start off the show with tolerance is because these reasons is, is the fact that literally uh, we're on dangerous grounds. Mm -hmm. dangerous dangerous grounds I don't have a problem if a gay person wants to go get married it's none of my business right right just like if the other party said hey why don't you come to you need to mandatory go to this church you need to go mm -hmm. right it's your right mm -hmm. you can choose not to go you can choose to go just like gay marriages right, right? it's not that big of a deal to me a lot of Christians are making a big deal about this. They're going nuts, but it's, it's their right. It's their right to choose who they want to marry. Right. None of my business. I agree. That's why we live in the United States of America. Mm -hmm. we got freedoms. So why should my agenda push, push what they want to do with their life? Does that make sense? Yeah, I think so. I, it's just, it, to me, it's, it's such a, it, it, it's almost like there's, it's such a simple thing to just, to, to lump it into, it's just saying this, it's just saying that, it's just saying that if, if you are a business owner, you don't want to do business with, with, you know, um, with gay people or with, with any, with any type of thing that, that you can claim that it's against your religion. Um, but I, I, it's one of those where I almost wonder how, how necessary it is anymore. But at the same time, then, then uh, it's just, it's a slippery slope. Like, I don't, I don't have a, it, I, I wish, I guess for me, it's like, I just wish we lived in, in the, the type of, of world, the type of society where as Christians, as, as Muslims, as, as whatever religion, I mean, I mean, pretty much every religion that I am aware of, and I'm not an expert on, I'm, I don't say I'm an expert on Christianity, but I've, I'm Christian. I, I, you know, I, I feel like I know a decent amount about, about Christian faith. Right, but all the faiths in, in in general, from what I know, I mean, basically, we're kind of all called to just be be good people, love each other, and 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 be good neighbors to to our well, fellow man. You know, I mean, if you're a believer, love yeah, love your neighbor as uh, you know as you love yourself. That's pretty much the biggest. And I oh, when you the mighty make, commandment right there. Yeah, when you mix politics with that, 
I, I think that's where it gets we get lost. We get Absolutely. so we get so caught up in agendas, mm -hmm. politics, laws, personal agendas. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's sad. Christians are just as guilty, absolutely, as the other parties involved. Absolutely, you know, and it's 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 down. It's it's just, I'm ashamed sometimes. Yeah, yeah. What some of these self-proclaimed Christians say and do, mm -hmm. you know, and, and it's just it, it just muddies the water, long term. Yeah, big time, big time. And it's it's a soundbite culture. I mean, it's in politics too, but it, but in in religion where it's like you pick one little verse or one segment of a verse and plaster this all over. Um, and and to, totally take it out of context, or right? Totally, you know, totally convolute the message that that the Bible is trying to to convey to meet your agenda, which again gets right back to the agenda issue. It's 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 sad, you know. Um, I just you know with everything that's going on in Indiana, you know, we're gonna get down to these stories. And um, you back up, Chris? Yeah. All right. I got your mic back on. All right. Let's, um, let's try to get this phone call because I'm not getting it on my end. Maybe if we okay. send it to the air, it'll work up. All right. We'll take who, this. Who is it? Line number three, I believe, is uh, the state senator. Hey, you're on the Jeff Adams show. Who's this? Hello. Hello. Can you hear us? Hang on a minute, Chris. Keep talking. Someone talk. Anyways, <laughs> um, go ahead and continue with your point that you were trying to say about. Well, it's just, uh, you know, like a lot of things, they, they sound real good. Whether, whether it's this law, whether it's other laws, whether it's religious things, um, they, they sound really good until people get in the way and, and people screw things up. Exactly. And, and that's when it comes up to... To feelings, you know, we we can't argue with, like we were talking about earlier. Mm -hmm. You know, once you start getting with feelings, like you can't tweet, you can't call, you can't do anything with feelings because you will care if you carry feelings on your shoulders. Which is there's nothing wrong with that, you know. There's nothing wrong with that, and um, I just think that you know we we have to start, you know, like I did, step back and regroup and look at the facts. You know, mm -hmm. read what's actually being passed because if we start doing that then you, you'll see that has nothing against gay, gay community. It has nothing against any hate. I don't, you know, maybe I'm seeing it through my eyes, but I don't see any gay, uh, any hatred. You know, I'm not just going to say it's gay, but I don't see no hatred. You know, perfect example was um, this guy, this Muslim guy, he went to jail. You know, they were trying to make him shave his beard. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, that beard, you know, it, it, it's part of their tradition. You know, it's part of their culture. It's part of the religion. You know, and thanks to this law, he was able to keep his beard. Right. Now, we don't hear about that on the news. You know, all we hear is like, hey, we have, you know, state Indiana, you know, they're allowed to carry, they're allowed to open carry weapons, but they're not allowed to hold hands if you're in the same, same, same sex marriage. No, it has nothing to do about that. Hey, Carla, you're on the air. Hey, it's Matt. Hi, uh, this is Joshua Smith. Um, oh, hey, Josh. How you hey, doing? How y'all doing? Not We're, bad. I'm fine. Thank you for asking. Great. So now, you, I, you know, I know that uh, you guys wanted me to call in about one thirty. So yeah. Yes. Oh no, thank you. Um, and actually, uh, uh, Jeff, this is Josh Smith, the lawyer I was talking about. So hopefully, he can explain to us better. The you know, since Danny was like, well, this is a lot of. Jumbo jumbo. Let's talk, talk about this craziness. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. This is uh you know, this is this is left wing hysterics. It's it's you know, it's quite silly. It is. It is. So Yeah. You know, um, okay. Why don't why don't we just get, let's just make some disclaimers out front because yeah. you know, of course we always want to know about about people these days. Everything's about, you know, who's talking, who's okay, so I'm gay, openly gay, proud of it, it's great. Uh no, I'm not religious, I don't belong to any I'm not a member of any organized religion. Um, I have a very healthy respect for religion and tolerance of it. Yeah. And uh, that's who I am. So really, I have no, you know, I have no, uh, pers you know, personal interest uh, in, you know, in, in this particular regulatory scheme. It doesn't, it doesn't impact me in the sense that I would need to use it. Um, so hopefully that should 
at least get rid of you know get rid of any yes. preconceptions that, mm-hmm. uh, yep. that I'm somehow personally biased here. In fact, the opposite is true. Yes, we get got it. Now, are you because in they, Indiana? Uh, yeah, people always want to. Yeah. I'm not actually. I live I, I live and uh, I practice law in Pennsylvania. Okay. Okay. And you know the, the way that it's really most of these laws, state by state, when you look at them all, they're basically the same. Uh, they do the same thing. There is, you know, there's a lot of time, well, this, this law isn't the same as the other one. Well, I mean, there's two, there's two ways to look at that. The first is, yeah, well, you know what, that's kind of silly. They are pretty much the same. In fact, the statutory language in a lot of them is virtually identical. Um, they're all just modeled after, uh, you know, RIFRA, the federal RIFRA. Um, states are allowed to grant broader protections for religion than the federal government. States are always allowed to do that with any particular freedom. They can, they can sort of raise the bar in the sense that they can grant broader protections, but they can't go lower than the bar um, as far as granting less than the Constitution uh, requires. Right. So there's, there's that. And then there's also, you know, one of the things that we seem to have forgotten about is federalism, the idea that, you know, that people, of course, hear this a lot as referred to as states' rights. Um, that's a very important feature of our government. We have 50 different states, and they can have, you know, when it comes to uh, areas of law that the federal government doesn't regulate, that's left to each state to decide on a state-by-state basis. And there's something to be, we, we seem to have sort of nationalized everything these days, and that people in, if that live in Maine or Oregon or California, they, they feel somehow as though it's their place to tell the people of Indiana or tell the people of Pennsylvania or Texas right. how to run their lives and how to govern. And that's inappropriate. There's a lot of arrogance in that, I think. Um, because, of course, if people in Indiana don't like the laws that the Indiana legislature passes, there's a very simple solution, which is to move to a different state. Exactly. It has more amenable laws. And eventually enough people come together in a single place where they comprise a maybe a legislative majority, or at least they have some political power and they can pass laws that they want. And everyone gets to live in places where the laws are suitable for them. And that leads to a happier republic. That's the idea. Yeah, it's, you know, it's, have, yeah, it's crazy too. I mean, you know, or you, or you find somebody, you know, you want to elect that believes in the stuff that you want to believe and you vote for them. You go out there and vote. I think with the law, did the law pass, Chris? It was like 60 to, uh, yes, 60, two. what was it? 62 to 33 or something? Yes, and I'm, I'm going to get it actually from the website, uh, Indiana. Um, are, we and, talking, are we talking about the Indiana? Yeah, the Indiana yes. SB the, the one. Indiana. Yeah. Yeah. It, it clearly it, passed, you know. <laughs> it passed with, with by majority, uh, and, you know, 40 to 10. Yeah, 40 to I 10. Mean, the fact is, I mean, people, there's this idea today that people, they think that they can, they have the right to the laws that they want and to live wherever they want. Right. That's not how it works. You can have one or the other. You can't have both. And everyone thinks they're entitled to both now. Well, at least everyone on the left does. And that doesn't work. That's what that reduces to is minority rule, which is not a democracy, but rather an oligarchy. And then the question becomes just how big of an oligarchy is it? Is it, you know, slightly less than 50% or is it, like with a lot of things these days, nine unelected, unaccountable lawyers on the Supreme Court? Right. Right saying mm-hmm. what social policy should be for the entire nation. And, you know, that's more like what Iran has with their Supreme Council and whatnot. That's not how we do things here. Now, Josh, I have a question for you. Because, um, um, obviously, I sure. feature you on my article on libertycanonmedia.com. And um, one of the clips that, yeah. I, that, I, that I put in there was that uh, one of the mayors said that the reason that Indiana passed this is because the... Supreme Court said it's, un- it's unconstitutional to ban gay marriage. Now, you read the law. I read the law. Does it say anything about discrimination against the gay community or a discrimination against no, of anybody? The notion, is, yeah, the, the notion is absurd. I mean, you know, it's, this, is the, this is the most discriminatory against GLBT law that anyone's ever seen that doesn't actually have it in the law. There's no, you know, there's no, you know, they're all, they're all saying that this is such a discrimination. It, 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 they act as though the law had said, and we're discriminating against GLBT people. Yeah. Even though it mentions nothing of the sort. It does, it, the, the, fact, the, thing, the thing about the way these laws work, 
okay, is that religion discriminates in various ways. For example, uh, you know, it's, I'm just going to use it, uh, one that comes to mind quickly. Um, in Roman Catholicism, women cannot be priests. Okay, okay? yeah, right. Well, I mean, there are, there are these, you know, there, I, I believe at some point there was this organization like Roman Catholic Women Priests. It was all one word or whatever. They were quickly excommunicated. But yep. they, they can't be priests. The, the rules of bad religion are no women is priests. That's discriminatory, okay? So the left believes that discrimination in and of itself is a bad thing. That's problematic. Religion has various rules. Some of them are, are uh, you know, required in that religion by the scriptures. Right. The, the question is not just whether, you know, whether discrimination exists, but how problematic it is. That's the, the thing about the, the uh, GLBT community is that their lifestyles intersect with pretty much every organized religion in, you know, a small handful of ways. Mm -hmm. This doesn't exist with a lot of other, I mean, religion has plenty of rules that mm -hmm. people have to follow. This is one where it just it just so happens, and most religions, you know, have this uh, thing about homosexuality uh, because it's either in their scriptures or it's you know I mean it's it certainly is not something that. Uh, what well, is? Let me, let me let me back up for a second. Well, it's it's stereotypical. You know, I, it's it's stereotypical. You know, in in the Bible, you know, and it's you know, and it's and it's sad because a lot of religion points out if you're a homosexual more than you can look at, you know, someone sleeping out of their marriage bed with their wife. You know, I mean, what is the difference, you know, you know, in, in God's well, eyes? Thing. Well, that's, that's exactly, the, and that's exactly what I was, yeah, that's a great, that's great that you said that because that, that gets me right back on track here. The, the thing is, you know, people say, well, you know, there are various things you can't do, like you can't, uh, you know, have an affair. Well, what are you going to, are you going to bake it? Are you going to require that people bake a cake for them? This is, this is precisely what I mean by the left missing the point of this law. Yeah. Okay? The thing about it is, if you, if you, most, if you went to, if, you know, if a gay person, and, you know, let's, let's assume for a second that it's kind of, like, not obvious that they're probably gay. Let's assume they're just, like, a you know, regular-looking person. Right. They don't seem particularly flamboyant or anything like that. And they walk into a bakery and they say, and the baker not only makes cakes, but also has, like, you know, baked goods available for purchase. Like, you know, cupcakes and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And the guy says, I'd like a cupcake, please. The baker is not going to deny that person service because it's not against their religion to serve a gay person. Yeah. That's not the problem. No. Okay? The problem arises in a very narrow context, actually. It arises when somebody is asked to perform a service such as making a cake or... Participating, flowers, participating in the ceremony. Participating in a gay wedding. In a exactly. ceremony, exactly. A particular aspect of people, you know, being gay. There's this gay, you know, the, these gay weddings. This is what you're, you, you're, these people are being asked to participate. However, indirectly, people say, well, it's not like they ask them to show up there. It doesn't matter. Religion doesn't really care, generally speaking, if, the, if you know, what is sinful is done a little bit or a lot. It's still not allowed. And exactly. So, you know, the problem is when you ask them to participate in that. That's where you get the, the response, I'm sorry, I can't do that. Exactly. Now, uh, um, here, you know, here, let, yeah. let's, let's, you know, now we have people saying, oh, this is a bad law, this is a bad law. And like you said earlier at the beginning of the call, you know, tolerance is a two-way street. Now, if, let's say, the, the, the Twitter activists, because I'm going to call them Twitter activists, because me and you, and I've seen you more, you know, you probably seen me confront these people saying, oh, this is hate, this is hate, this is hate, you know, and, yeah, all, and yeah. all they'll do is tweet back to you, but they're not willing to take the, the, uh, the invitation to come on the show and explain their view. Now, if those Twitter activists will really believe on their cause, why aren't they boycotting the, the entire United States? Yep. The, or why here's not, here's oh, the reality. They have, no, they have no idea what they're actually against here. They have no idea what they're boycotting. They have no idea what the law says. Virtually none of them have read it. Um, and it's three pages. You know, it's, <laughs> it's not like they're reading right. an encyclopedia. Right. What they hear is buzzwords. Bigot, hate, racist. They hear all that. 
And that's like, and boom, they go into Twitter activist mode and they start saying, boy, you know, they start with their hashtags. That's what they do. If you look at what the left tweets, there is no substance to any of it. No, there isn't. It doesn't. No, there is it. It's because they have no clue what What's they happened? are actually against. Now, if they yeah. were really, if no, they were true, really. They don't realize that this law was already. I'm sorry. Yeah. Go ahead and finish that. Well, they don't realize that the law was already, you know, this, these laws were already, in, these, there is already a federal RIFRA. The reason why these states pass these is simply, because, you know, I mean, there's a very practical reason why. See, when the Supreme Court decided Employment Division versus Smith, no relation, um, they, they basically gutted the Free Exercise Clause. And that was, uh, that, of course, was problematic to a lot of people, and they wanted to sort of restore the proper, you know, the proper legal stand. They wanted to sort of raise the bar. What the Supreme Court said, states only have to do a certain amount now. They only have to do this. They only have to accommodate religion, you know, this much. And the uh, Supreme, I'm sorry, the uh, Congress said, well, we want to actually raise that bar so the states have to accommodate it even more. And so the federal government has to accommodate it even more. Okay? Yeah, and um, he, here's where and, I have uh, a problem. Here's where I have a problem. You know, we could finish up with this one. Here's where I have a problem with uh, the, the activists. It goes back, if you really care about your opinion, you know, why aren't you, you know, talking about what's happening overseas? You know, they're, they're literally killing the gay community out of extinction oh, yeah. from the overseas. It's, it's, now, it's embarrassing. Here, this is embarrassing. Yeah, it's embarrassing to humanity, the fact that they are so hysterical over something so ridiculously, I mean, almost like infinitely trivial by comparison. And... And this is, you know, this is what they're focused on. It's, it's absolutely embarrassing. People will look back, at, you know, in history, and they're going to be like, those people were ridiculous, and we're going to get lumped in with them because, you know, they're not going to, you know, they're just going to see this insanity, and they're going to think that we were all doing it. Yeah, and, uh, but you know, I, so I just want to really thank you. Stay, you know. I just really want to thank you, Josh, for taking your time, you know, and speaking out. And, you know, you you really taking a lot of heat over online and over Twitter, and I really hope oh, that people fair. are listening, yeah. you know, are listening to, to your belief, you know, and I want to, once again, thank you for coming on the show. You know, anytime you want to call in, just go ahead and dial our number. We'll, uh, we'll pick it right up, okay? Hey, my pleasure. Thanks a lot. All right, Josh. Have a Thanks, good one. Josh. You know, it's interesting to see that perspective of you, you know, from two different, two different areas. You know, he's bringing that lawyer side, and he's bringing, actually, he participates, you know, he, on that you know, activism, but he's actually trying to educate them the right way. You know, educate yourself before you go out there and start making yourself look like an idiot. Because most of these people that are just Twitter active and are seeing, well, you know, Miley Cyrus said this, you know, um, the other celebrities said this. So let me just go ahead and retweet it and not back up. Yeah, I, I, I want to listen to a celebrity that's uh, butt naked on a, a wrecking ball. <laughs> exactly. That's why I want to get all my advice from. Yes. Good, good grief. You know, and that's that's the problem that we're getting our news from the media, from social media. Now, there's nothing wrong with getting our news with social media, but it talks about get educated. You know, read the one page law that literally has woken up the entire nation and even has businesses walking out out of Indiana. You know, you got Angie's List pulled a forty million dollar project of Indiana. Now, what? That's asinine. That is ridiculous. Why are you doing that? Now, not only you're affecting. Indiana as a state, but think about all those jobs. One thousand new jobs were lost. Now, last time I checked, the economy is not doing very well. No, it's not. It's really not. I don't understand people. Get over yourselves. You're trying to better our country. You eliminated a thousand jobs over. Well, I'm boycotting Indiana. I'm pulling this. No thousand jobs. I'm going to take it elsewhere. Thank you. Exactly. Now we have. Um, I have a. A letter here that was signed by, I believe, it was seven different uh, CEOs. You know that they're pulling their business. Why are you pulling your business? If you are decided to open up a business in the United States, hey, guess what? You already participating. You already uh, mandated by that law because one is called the First Amendment, two is called the Federal RIFRA, and three, nineteen states have the exact same RIFRA that the federal level has. Plus, I believe 32, 32 or thirty nine. Differences to have a little bit of the same, but it covers the basics of of the main of the main one, which is a federal one. I don't get it. Why you're pulling up your business where you'll be hurting not just 
your company, you're hurting the entire nation because we have, I don't even have a job. But it's, you know what, in hindsight, you know, we don't want to be hypocrites on this show. <laughs> they have a right. They do. Exactly. And they do. And that's what's the beauty of capitalism. Yeah. You know, you could pull up your bit. Like right now, you know, me, Jeff could be like, hey, I don't like the state of Florida anymore. I want to take it back to Texas. Hey, Jeff can do that. He could take that one job that he gives me and take it and give it to somebody <laughs> else in Texas. Going to transfer you to Texas. <laughs> but it, it, has, it has become to the point that, you know, people are just making dumb decisions without doing the research. And all we ask you guys, you know, is do your own research. You know, we're not... But, we're, you know, Chris, I mean, what if they did do their research and they just pulled the business anyways? Then that's the right. Exactly. That is the right. That's you, what we're trying to get at. Yeah. We're trying to get at rights here. Everybody's right. You know, everybody's rights to have a right, you know? And that's, that's what's important. That's what I call having tolerance mm -hmm. for people. Yeah. As long as you're doing the decision by after you make your... your, your your research, you know. I said, well, I don't want to. And like Josh said, if you don't like the state, move out of the state. You don't have to. No more says that you have to stay in Indiana or Florida, you know, to give you a couple of the states that have it. Well, when you were uh, fooling with the phone lines, I was talking to Cray Cray. And I was going to ask Josh this, but, you know, he was he was on his uh, soapbox. He, I, You know, he couldn't get him down. But he was, you know, very passionate about what he was saying. I appreciate his call. But I was going to ask him, you know, I, I was going to ask Josh the same question me and Craig here were talking about is like, what if I, what if the government told you, mm -hmm. you had to go to church? Yeah. You have to go. It's mandatory. You have to do this. Or you can no longer practice law. Right. It's just, it's just, you know, that's why I'm, I'm that's why I'm glad the law is there. It's, it's still right. holding up by the skin of its teeth yeah. until some crazy liberal that doesn't know what they're doing comes along and messes you know, messes the water up, takes a piss in the water. <laughs> exactly. Now, who wants then, to, who wants to swim and pee? Then you be kind of quiet. You know, <laughs> what do you think since you're coming out of this perspective of you know, the sad per perspective? I, it's just, I, I, I maybe I'm um you know living in a in a fantasy world, but I just I, again to kind of go back to I don't know maybe you were messing with the phones at that point too, but you know just like if if we're all just good to each other. Gay, straight, black, white, male, exactly. female, yeah. rich, poor, wh whatever. If we're all just good to each other, yeah. Then, then none of these laws are are necessary, and and that's that's my frustration because I, I would love to live in a you know I don't want to say I, I I would love the the minimal government ideas, the libertarian ideas of, of the, you know just let us do what we need to do. Yeah. But there's too many people that can't handle that kind of freedom. No. So we need the the guide we need the the guidelines and we need we need that stuff. But it just you know, like, if everybody just takes care of themselves, loves their neighbor as themselves, like... Yeah, and, and it goes back to that whole, fine. you know, leave me alone, and I leave you alone. Mm -hmm. you watch know? out for me, I'll watch out for you. Exactly, like, and, you know, it's awesome that you say that, because we're going to end the show with a clip, you know, that I, that I did a previous article, and I, we're just waiting for a phone call from the state senator. He, he texted me that he's running a little bit late. It should be, like, 30 seconds from now. But, um, and I believe this is him. Hey, you're on the Jeff Adams Show. Yeah, this is Bart Hester. How are you? Hey, Senator. How you stay, Senator? How you doing, sir? I'm doing well. Well, Jeff, let me introduce to you the worst human being on Earth. Bart? It's him. <laughs> Bart's the, the worst human the being? The worst on human being on the world. I thought so, it was me. No. So we have a celebrity here. You know, he's been labeled by the worst human being in the world. Now, uh, Bart, you want to explain to that why are you the worst human being in the world? Well, you know, as a state legislator, certainly in Arkansas, you, you only get a short time here. And so I've been very um, um, intentional with my time working on issues like um, certainly this religious freedom that's making some national news right now. We've worked on issues like, uh, or I have specifically unemployment reform, um, issues like if you're going to receive SNAP food stamp benefits, then you at least have to apply for a job to get your benefits. I'm not saying you have to have a job. You at least have had to try and apply for a job. You know, things like that are apparently uh, very uh, offensive to yeah. some in, in Arkansas. So your your uh, your Senate um, try to well try is trying to pass HB one two two eight, correct? Uh, the Senate did pass it. Uh, we made a small amendment to it. Okay. We sent it back down to the House. Uh, 
they're going to concur in about 30 minutes on their floor with it. Uh, hopefully, the governor will sign it today. Okay, nice. so it should be signed by today. And now, this one, is it the same as uh, the one that Indiana passed? Or is it, have you guys tweaked it a little bit like the other states? Well, we tweaked it uh, a little bit like the other states. But it, uh, I mean, for all intentional purposes, it's, the, it's more or less the same bill. Now, um, are you so, guys getting um, the same hate as Indiana? Um, you know, uh, Indiana's catching the brunt of it right now. We we feel like as soon as the governor signs it, a lot of that attention will be spread to us. Um, uh, you know, and, and, and maybe take some of the relief off Indiana, but put some more over here on us. And you know, it's it's just kind of it's almost silly uh, the intention it's getting. Uh, we're, Arkansas is going to be the 40th state with this as law. Uh, 20, 21 states have passed it by statute, like we're doing. Mm-hmm. Um, I believe there's been about 13, 13 states that have done it through a court ruling, like when someone had their religious belief, beliefs violated and they went to court, um, uh, and they won. So the court uh, read it into law, uh, and then six states have done it through um, through constitutional amendment. Okay. Now, um, what is your uh, split on your houses? You know, on the state and the house. You know, what uh, what is it? Republicans and Democrats. So how many you guys have? Um, in, in, in the in the Senate, we have 24 out of 35 Republicans. Okay. And in the House, I, I could miss it a little bit, but I believe we got 64 out of 100. But I'll tell you, this is a bipartisan issue in Arkansas. Yeah, I was going to ask gonna you, so how, how, what was the number vote. that it passed? Um, in, in the Senate, we got 24 votes. Okay. But uh, we had a couple of Republicans not vote for it, and we had a couple of Democrats vote for it. Okay. Uh, in the House, last time, we got more than 70 votes. Oh, wow. So we feel very confident. We feel very confident we'll get uh, far more than the 51 that's necessary. And obviously the governor approves this message. Uh, the governor does approve this message. He's a, you know, we think so much of Governor Hutchinson here in Arkansas. He's a very prudent and pragmatic governor. Uh, he, he tries to look at uh, not only this bill but other bills. And uh, he wants to be fair at all involved. But uh, he understands the importance of uh, religious liberty and uh, one's right to believe. Now that you know, now that you guys, you know, you guys are probably at the end of it. You know, you got you said that today it should be signed. Now other states are trying to do the same thing as you guys. You know, should they stop, or should they continue carrying the, you know, the, the flag? You know, because right now you guys are done. You know, you said they're signing by today. Now what about the other states? You know, they're thinking about it. And if I was a state, you know, legis- uh, legislator like yourself, I'll be scared because I'm like, you know, am I, is my state going to be next with the boycotting? Yeah. Um- I'll tell you, um, the, the boycotts are a few voices, and they try to be loud. But here's the reality: Are they going to put boycott Arkansas because you're the most recent state? Because, like I said, forty out of fifty states have this. That's eighty mm-hmm. percent of the country. You know, uh, let's not mistake that Bill Clinton signed this bill. Uh, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer authored this bill. Yes, uh, I President did. President Barack Obama <laughs> did this bill when he was in, in the Senate. I mean, this is something people, uh, we all believe in. Uh, the, the reality that there's an economic cost isn't real to me. And, and if there was, uh, my religious freedom and my economic freedom and liberty is not for sale. Yeah. And um, State Senator Bart Hester, that was the worst human being in the world in the Jeff Adams <laughs> show. Jeff, you have any questions for our, the worst human being in the world? All I got to say to Bart is it's about to get hot. In the springs. How do you like that one? <laughs> oh! <laughs> well, uh, Bart, I appreciate your call, you know, and you're welcome to come on the show anytime. And let us know um, if, you know, you, there's any more support that you need from the good old state of Florida. Uh, I, I will certainly do it. And uh, thanks for having me today. And uh, I, I appreciate the vote of confidence. We're going to be prepared for the storm. Oh, don't worry. I'll be right behind you writing some articles about you guys next. So th- thank you. Right, thank and you. until next time. Well, what do you think? You know, we got two perspectives. You know, we got the state senator and then we get, you know, the civilian side. Then we get the three doofus side, you know, me, Jeff, and Danny, you know? <laughs> they, they, I think they, we covered all the bases. You know, the people that I invited that supported, you know, that's, that think that this is a discrimination against the gay community. Obviously, they did not call you know the phone lines will be open monday to friday every day so you can come in you know talk to us you know and we just want to get the facts you know here jeff said it and danny said it and for me i don't care what you do at your house just don't make us do 
something that goes against our religion. You know, do whatever you want. I got my own sins to worry about. So just don't don't make me sin more than I already sin. Right. Well, I, if you want to close that, we want to close out with that clip. Yep. Uh, thanks for hanging out on the Jeff Adams show, but you need to watch this clip. It's uh, by the great Charlie Chaplin. Mm. Gonna love this clip. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Here on the Jeff Adams. Peace out. I'm sorry, but I don't want to be a, an emperor. That's not my business. I don't want to rule or conquer anyone. I should like to help everyone if possible. Jew, Gentile, black man, white. We all want to help one another. Human beings are like that. We want to live by each other's happiness, not by each other's misery. We don't want to hate and despise one another. In this world, there's room for everyone, and the good earth is rich and can provide for everyone. The way of life can be free and beautiful. But we have lost the way. Greed has poisoned men's souls, has barricaded the world with hate, has goose-stepped us into misery and bloodshed. We have developed speed, but we have shut ourselves in. Machinery that gives abundance has left us in want. Our knowledge has made us cynical, our cleverness hard and unkind. We think too much and feel too little. More than machinery, we need humanity. More than cleverness, we need kindness and gentleness. Without these qualities, life will be violent, and all will be lost. The aeroplane and the radio have brought us closer together. The very nature of these inventions cries out for the goodness in men, cries out for universal brotherhood, for the unity of us all. Even now, my voice is reaching millions throughout the world, millions of despairing men, women, and little children, victims of a system that makes men torture and imprison innocent people. To those who can hear me, I say, do not despair. The misery that is now upon us is but the passing of greed, the bitterness of men who fear the way of human progress. The hate of men will pass and dictators die, and the power they took from the people will return to the people. And so long as men die, liberty will never perish. Soldiers, don't give yourselves to brutes. Men who despise you, enslave you, who regiment your lives, tell you what to do, what to think, and what to feel, who drill you, diet you, treat you like cattle, use you as cannon fodder. Don't give yourselves to these unnatural men, machine men with machine minds and machine hearts. You are not machines. You are not cattle. You are men. You have the love of humanity in your hearts. You don't hate. Only the unloved hate, the unloved and the unnatural. Soldiers, don't fight for slavery, fight for liberty. In the 17th chapter of St. Luke it is written, the kingdom of God is within man, not one man nor a group of men, but in all men, in you, you the people have the power, the power to create machines, the power to create happiness. You the people have the power to make this life free and beautiful, to make this life a wonderful adventure. Then in the name of democracy, let us use that power. Let us all unite. Let us fight for a new world, a decent world that will give men a chance to work, that will give youth a future and old age a security. By the promise of these things, brutes have risen to power, but they lie, they do not fulfill that promise, they never will. Dictators free themselves, but they enslave the people. Now let us fight to fulfill that promise. Let us fight to free the world, to do away with national barriers, to do away with greed, with hate and intolerance. Let us fight for a world of reason. A world where science and progress will lead to all men's happiness. Soldiers, in the name of democracy, let us all unite! <laughs>